afternoon, evening, midnight, everyone. Welcome to Roundtable Live. My name is Bear Taffy. I'm joined by Northern Line Rockley Smile and Duber. Good to have What's you up? back. What's up? Good to be back. Thanks for the sponsorship, Nick. <laughs> You're very welcome. It worked out just in time for the right. show to go live. <laughs> Perfect. Is that a perilla leaf? leaf? No, I think it's oregano. Yeah, it mm. looks like oregano to me. He's been cooking a lot over there in uh, Boston, so... It looks like it smells like oregano. It does. Uh, yeah. It smells like oregano. Oh, could it be one of those Japanese fans that used to cut people up? Oh, nice. <laughs> that, yeah. I think that's exactly what it is, actually. There you go. It's a new movie coming out called Duber. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about video games and such and the like again this week. Hope you'll hope you'll uh, indulge us for about an hour, hour and a half or so. It's been a been a bit of a dry week this week not a lot going on so we'll be talking primarily about what we've been playing and far cry 5 because that's the only thing anyone's playing these days so uh beginning with what we've been playing this week i know nick you've certainly been into a hell of a lot this week that you've been enjoying too right pc building simulator no well, i wouldn't say it's a hell of a lot i played it for four hours last night but it was actually quite a bit of fun mm -hmm. uh it's very much what the name uh, implies it's not a meme game as some have come into my chat and suggested you know, there's a lot of simulator games that take great liberties. This game's actually intending to let you build proper PCs. Uh, the idea behind it being that you get to run a little shop and you get work orders uh, through emails. Uh, some of them are actually, like, kind of funny. Uh, and then they send you their PC the next day and you get to take it, put it on your work desk, take it apart, figure out what's wrong with it, if it needs to be diagnosed, or just replace the part they asked you or upgrade the part they asked you or... In some cases, they say, I want to run a sailing simulator game. And then you have to install an application that finds out what the, uh, the requirements are for that game, contrast it against what's in the computer, and then upgrade what you need necessary for the game to run. Uh, and then you mail it back to them and collect your money. Um, it's got actual a whole bunch of brand sponsors. It's got like stuff by uh, NZXT cool. and uh, Intel Chips, uh, Corsair, a bunch of different things like that, EVGA. Um, so you can build a bunch of like current computers right now if you want i was wondering like how difficult that would be to obtain that proper licensure but then again there's not a lot of competition for the B no. for the pc software or building simulator games is there so they not really they're probably good it's a, I, it simplifies things i have to say to a degree i mean obviously there's a lot of intricacies when it comes to building pcs that are not going to be able to be covered in the perfect detail yeah. but like it does at least map the wire routing and stuff you just don't do it yourself Otherwise, you'd have to sit and read the manual for every motherboard you install. Uh, Ryan, what were you going to say? Yeah, it seems like uh, it's kind of like my ideal mark for a simulator, which is just like one notch away from unrealistic back towards realism, but it doesn't actually make you like literally micromanage your solder or something like yeah. that. So, yeah, it, it seems kind of cool, even though also... I. You, something about like like bus driving simulator i'm like that's cool i could do that for like an hour but i have such negative associations with building a pc <laughs> because right. of the anxiety that comes from pushing the on button that i have no desire to play this whatsoever it's well, like it does not have that happen at all like <laughs> it, it, everything you put together just works so you don't really have to worry about that it'll give you positive like real life i just yeah. feel i feel like the difference and maybe yeah, the reason the reason you see it differently ryan is and i i think i see it similarly it's not that it's bad. It's because with, like, Euro Truck Simulator, you can kind of turn your brain off. Yeah. And, like, just enjoy the scenery where the scenery in PC Building Simulator would probably be a back office. And... Well, like, I'm watching the trailer, and it actually looks so much better than probably just about every other simulator I've ever played. That's really well done. <laughs> it even has some funny moments of, like, the way they do the emails. Like, they come out as, like, almost quest chains. You'll have this writer, and he'll send you his computer and say, something's busted, can you fix it? You send it back to him, and then he's like, well, I need you to upgrade my hard drive because my goddamn publisher says I have to store all these pages on this thing, mm -hmm. and I need 500 more gigabytes. <laughs> then he sends it back to you. You put in another hard drive, and then he's like, you took out my other hard drive. Now I don't have my work anymore. I'm breaking my entire computer, and it's, <laughs> it's all my publisher's fault. So it, you get these weird little relationships with these random people through their email chains. And it's kind of funny because you can reject them and not do them if you want or take them on just as well. And that has dynamic repercussions later on in the game, right? You know, I wish it did. I wish. <laughs> so there's like a couple levels that I wish they went further with. And that's one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. There's decisions you can make that are borderline unethical about how you run your business. Uh, you can put a bunch of used parts in somebody's computer that you had from a prior job and send it back to them. 
or you could like upgrade something in a way that is not really an upgrade or like i just said you could swap out somebody's hard drive and you have all their data and they just are fine with that because it doesn't modulate or doesn't moderate doesn't show that kind of level of detail yeah and that's kind of lame i wish it actually did that kind of stuff and it was like oh 10 points against your ethics because you ran your business like a shithead <laughs> um, but there's no reputation there's no like getting reviews from your clients or anything like that it's just you do your work you send it in you get paid and you buy more work desks so you can do more work yeah. so like the payoff is you get more parts to do more work with it's not like you ever expand or like operate in multiple places you're just in your shop as far as i can tell anyway missed opportunity for somebody whoever's sponsoring them to send out like one or two really hard to find emails about a PC they want built. And if you're able to find it and accomplish it within a certain amount of time, you get that PC that you built. Mm. Free gift. Yeah, I saw on Reddit actually people were saying they missed a huge opportunity to let you go into the free build mode, let you make a PC, and then have it be built by a vendor and sent to you. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. Because Buy it they're real the parts that you put together, basically how you really do it. So why not? But I had a great time with it. I actually would recommend it if you're at all interested in PC building. It's just abstracted enough that it feels like a game without feeling too much like work. Mm -hmm. um, although operating your schedule and making sure your parts are ordered in time does feel a bit like actual work. Because uh, you can actually screw that up. And if you, like I did, click three to five day shipping instead of one day shipping, you end up screwed on a job and then have to sit with a PC in your hallway for three days uh, or over the weekend, which is really annoying. Mm -hmm. So I like uh, it, though. I'm kind of with Ryan on it. Honestly, it's still just such a tough sell because I've had so many horrifying experiences <laughs> building computers and having to resubmit. Like I, yeah. I had the most recent build I had where a, uh, a motherboard issue happened. So you know what that means is you built the whole thing, tested it. Oh, yep. what's wrong? It's the motherboard. That means take everything the out, yeah. finger apart <laughs> and send the motherboard in to get a new one sent yep. back. I know there's like people that really really like it like yeah. people that are like i will build your pc for you because i find it enjoyable yeah and i know you don't I even have to pay me particular. yeah yeah and i'm like that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> this this game is for you i can understand and i don't know i, I might i'm kind of open to it because the press around it and like nick's testimonial carries a lot of weight as well it seems like it's it's good my main problem with simulators and this is what i wanted to ask you about actually is that i feel like Euro Truck Sim does a, an American Truck Simulator. They do a really good job of straddling the line where if you don't really know what you're getting into, they handhold you. And they're like, okay, this is where you go to buy gas. And this is what, mm -hmm. like, your, you know, thrust to weight ratio means and blah, blah, blah. But then when I played Car Mechanic Simulator, they were just like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Basically, they're like, oh, you don't know where the lug nuts go on the Why V8. Why you buy this game? You exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it would be fun for like a stream, but they're like, oh, just go get the engine block lifter. And I'm like, I, you don't understand. You're talking to a child. Yeah. Like, I don't is know what like an engine block lifter is. that like the gold sim thing you guys played on? Yeah, gold rush oh, thing. Oh, well, that, <laughs> there was a tutorial on that, technically. There's <laughs> daily motion videos of oh, oh, the best presented game. <laughs> daily motion videos it, man that game basically realized that you watched enough sure. gold rush on discovery channel to know how gold yeah works. you were yeah. <laughs> the ideal customer right? i actually that, was legitimately without chat i wouldn't have made any progress in that the, yeah the, you like soak a mat in water and then squeeze it out and then pan through that water for gold i was like i didn't i thought you just shoved the yeah. plate no, in it makes the water. Sense. Go think like, about it but you wouldn't yeah. know until you've done it yeah, fair and that's <laughs> <laughs> what I need and what I was going to ask is, like, does it have a decent, like, assuming I didn't even know, like, I look at my case and I'm like, I don't know what that block is. I don't know yeah. what this board is. Like, does it go that far? Like, you could yeah. probably figure it out. There's okay. a tutorial. It actually, it well, all the parts are labeled and it has you basically put together a PC while it's telling you exactly what to do. Uh, and it's got info on all the steps along with it. Uh, then when you actually get to the game, like the actual campaign mode, it does it in small increments where the first thing you have to do is, like, okay, this guy sent his, he needs viruses removed, which is just put a USB stick in the back of it, install the program, run the program, mm. uh, then make sure it boots up. And then you put it out in the hallway, they take it, pay you, and then you go on to like, my computer's all dusty. Uh, okay, well, take it, open the side of the case, spray it out with compressed air, you're done. Does it boot? Great. Okay, put it in the hallway, get your money. Then it's like, okay, it's time to upgrade a hard drive. Take out a hard drive, swap the thing, put the cables in. And when you click on the cabling stuff, like it shows you 
uh, this needs to go into the motherboard, and then it puts a light where the motherboard port is. So it's like all you basically are doing is connecting dots. Gotcha. It's not like you need any actual technical information about Does that. Does it If you don't know how to build a PC, could you use this to learn? I think to a small degree. I don't. I don't think it gives you enough micro information to really do it properly, but it gives you the broad strokes. Like for every motherboard, there's going to be slightly different setups for things. It doesn't deal with stuff like RAM timing and dual channel stuff. Mm. It doesn't deal with like what ports fit where and what's like how you're going to align the cables to make everything look good. It just does a lot of that stuff for you. But all the stuff that's there makes sense and is generally consistent with how you would expect to find it in reality. So you could learn, like I said, the broad strokes. You're just still going to need a lot more specific info if you actually went to do it yourself. So there's some education to it, yeah. Cool. I wondered... I'm I'm totally going off on a tangent here, but back in the days of the California gold rush, Ryan, I wonder how many people had like that exact mentality you had. Like, oh, you yeah. just go in the river and shake it. <laughs> and around, the gold right? is That's there. The gold. Yeah. Look like some kind of idiot now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. PC building simulator. Yeah. Early access as well, I guess. So uh, Yes, I really hope they add more and more stuff to it because it really doesn't have much in the way of like liquid cooling. There's really none of that actually. Yeah. Um, if you want to build the flashiest, craziest computer, you can build like an RGB setup and have colors. You can actually, there's an app you install, you can make the colors flash and rainbows or change stuff, but it doesn't let you put like the ridiculous stuff Rumble Muffin does where he's got <laughs> like custom built liquid cooled solutions. Mm -hmm. It's basically mostly slotted, you know, typical manufactured stuff. But I know they could add that later if they felt like it or if they get sponsors. So I look forward to seeing how it goes in the next year and I'll definitely revisit it in the future. Got to be the one man responsible for my continued ability to use my own equipment. Rumble muffin <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, cool. There we go. PC building simulator. Uh, Mathis, Ryan, you guys been playing anything interesting this week? We played a way out together. Oh, you yeah. Sure yeah. Let we me finished the whole game. game. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, we did. Uh, should we throw up some spoiler tags, maybe? Talk in depth? Or... Well, are you two? I mean, yeah, like... I don't want it spoiled. Yeah. We can avoid that. I say, we, we, could, we, could play, we could play it pretty vague, I think. Yeah. yeah. In the end. Vag it up. Like... Go ahead, Ryan. Take start? it up. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, all right. I'll start. He's it's stretching. a story about uh, two dude bros. And it takes place in two the seven. Okay, so it takes place in the 70s, and the general gist is they've got these two guys who are in prison for various different crimes who meet one another in prison and devise a way to escape and uh, escape that prison. That takes about 20 minutes, and then the rest of, like, the five hours of the game is their life outside of prison and their past that comes back to haunt them and dealing with their family and being fugitives uh, and the bond that the two form with one another throughout. By playing Connect 4. By playing Connect Four, by playing darts, by playing horseshoes, by playing them. <laughs> can stay leaned in a wheelchair longer. Right. Yeah. Uh, who can Slime play volleyball, uh, banjo, and piano playing together. Right, yeah. Um, this is important stuff. Also, slime volleyball. You know, like uh, <laughs> the the what Jagex game. What? Don't know what no, that is. Yeah, uh, it's. It's, all right, don't worry about it. It's, just it's like a, it's a shareware volleyball game, basically. Okay. Yeah. I'm like 1995. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hell of a reference. <laughs> and um, <laughs> in performing crimes together as well, to some extent. Um, I, the thing I will say that I think like people maybe have the wrong idea. I had the wrong idea about this game. I think it I is too. not even close to being in the same vein as like The Escapist, where you watch like guard patterns and then you're like, oh, there's a piece of contraband I could use to like blah, blah, blah. It's a telltale game. Yep, more or less. It's essentially a cooperative, like forced cooperation telltale game. Yep. Which is cool. And I like I think the game is actually good, but I was kinda hoping there would be some kind of divergence or replay value where you could tackle things in a different way. But really it's like it's on rails and every once in a while they give you like a the world's smallest divergence and then you get back together and then you you know. It has like no narrative implications, really. The, yeah. the the different decisions you make in the game. That's interesting. That's really interesting, considering how confident they are with their only buy one copy model. You know, yeah. like, that sort of implies to me that they had a lot of different branching paths that they would be able to just sell people on that point. Like, yeah, you're gonna want to see what other stuff you can do. There's not the case. Yeah, I mean, like basically, what it boils down to when when choices show up, the choices are: do you want to do it quietly or loudly? Oh, and that's kind yeah. of like what you yeah. and then there's like a little like you get a different scene 
but it always, like Ryan said, it always like branches out and then comes back to the same point and then it continues from there. Um, yeah. There are multiple endings, but those those multiple endings are decided in the last like 10 to 15 minutes That's of the game. That's how it goes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Even even less than the last 10 minutes. Like, yeah, I mean, true. But I was like, there's, vague, I yeah, you're being vague. <laughs> <laughs> there's basically one decision at the end where you're like, what, which ending is it going to be? Right. And yeah, if yeah. you, you know. That, those are weak. I, I don't like that. With the, the thing, and this, uh, again, I'm being wary about spoilers. I think the game is like a seven or an eight. And I, there's a lot to like about it. Like, I think the story is serviceable. The, what's yeah. really cool about it is the presentation. The fact yeah. that, you know, you're forced to play it as two people. And you always see what the other person is doing on your screen. Uh, and then, like, the screen kind of varies in size depending on what's happening and what's important. And there's lots of weird little, like, diversion stuff that's neat to do. But the one thing that's really disappointing is that it feels like there should be... A d I felt like the game should be able to be ended in a different way. Yes, And I agree. my personal perspective on the ending was definitely that it was, like, neither of us want to do what the game wants us to do, but they're forcing us to do it, and there's, like... No, I, I don't want to say it because it's not even that funny. Like, there's no way out. But, like, it really narratively feels like if the players, you know, use their 200 IQ, there should be a way out. But um, there, there isn't. Instead, they're just like, you have to do one of two things. And it, right. I, it makes it kind of, like, narratively unsatisfying, I think. It makes yeah. you submit in a world where you think you have choices. Yeah. yeah. It, moreover, like, at the very end, I was like, I don't think these characters would do this. I think that, I agree. Like, That's how it, I felt. It forces, like, it manufactures an ending that feels artificial. But. Especially after, like, all the stuff that they do together. You're like... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's weird. It's... it's Outside of the ending, too, you, there's just a lot of... The, I agree. I think I agree with where you sit as far as, like, scoring the game. Like, a 7 or an 8, I think. Um, it's really funny, too. When, especially if you live in America. You can tell the developers are not American at all. <laughs> with their very generous view of what they think American prison is like. Um, it is inc <laughs> it is very nice. I think like, I'd like oh, to be in that prison. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Warm meals every day and stuff like that. Yeah, like, like oh, there's just no bars on the windows and they can open the windows when they want. There's sharp objects within ar like arms reach at all yeah. times. Um, the guards don't have any weapons on them. One of the guards is wearing a suit, but you know he's a guard because he's got a guard cap on. And a mustache. And a mustache. Uh, and, and there's just... people know I'm a guard. Right, exactly. And there's just like weird, weird just decisions with their world building that that kind of made it hilarious in a way that i didn't need it didn't need to be hilarious a very small thing that I, ryan and i both picked up on is this one point you guys are you're like you're you're robbing a gas station more or less and mm -hmm. there's a vault in the back you want to get the money out of so you get like the code to the vault from the lady who knows it and then you put the code in and you open up the vault that's just a vault. It's just not like in a wall. It's just a metal vault, tiny, that you open it up after you put the code in. You didn't bust it. And then a whole alarm goes off. Yeah. And there's like chaos. You're like, that doesn't make But you opened any it the way it's sense. meant to be opened. That, that's yeah. exactly it. It doesn't make any sense. Um, the other thing, like, you shouldn't, <laughs> and this is like the slightest spoiler, I guess, but like, it's not a prison escape game. Not at all. It's like, which is fine. But if you're going into it, like, you got this idea in your head of like, oh, I can't wait. Like me and my buddy are going to devise a Shawshank Redemption plan and get out of prison. It's not like that. It's really, it's like a buddy criminal story, really. And it starts yeah. in a prison, but it goes different places. Is it possible that this is the deepest lore of after Kane and Lynch dog days? <laughs> <laughs> and then they come back out stronger than ever? Mm. Took them long enough. Fuck. Or maybe Army of Two, because you never get to see their faces, right? I kept getting weird Army of Two vibes from the game. I kept saying it in the playthrough, so in the videos. I'm saying, because there's a lot of, like, that... There's moments... There's a moment in the prison early, early on, where you both are getting into, like, fist fights, And the two of them come back to back, and they're, like, fighting yeah. off. And I'm like, this is where Army of Two would do that camera swoop. And all of a sudden, and you gotta do that. high five. Yeah. There is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of weird... There's a lot of weird decisions. In it's a cin game. cinematic game for sure. Like there's, there's a scene where like you're both in kind of like parallel chases and yep. then it'll be like one dude and he'll run by a vent and the camera will stay and go through the vent and then your other dude like runs by it and it switches control to that person and then 
they run by like a CCTV camera and the camera oh. zooms in and it like switches yeah. control to the other person. It, it, it's like it's, they watched Panic Room recently. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's kind of neatly presented. I think the the presentation and the the gimmick of the game is really like its strongest uh, mm-hmm. its strongest feature. I think I the big disappointment. I've beaten it twice now. I beat it once with Madison, once with Kate, with both endings, which again is only like a ten minute diversion at that point. But it's like it's not very replayable at no, all it like, like it, yeah it's it's basically like playing an episode well it's like playing a whole season almost of the telltale games like back to back and yet things change like a little bit but you know there's like set pieces that are always going to be there it's not like if you do things vincent's way here then you go on a completely different track for the rest of the game that never like comes back to the leo track or whatever so yeah and there's other it, little... F- I'll continue, please, please. No, no, I was, all I was going to say is that it's, like, really the kind of thing that you play once, which is cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's other little funny things that are... So one of the things I really liked and you touched on is, like, the transitions. And I think while I was negative before playing the game on the idea of, like, always seeing split screen, even though we're playing online, the, the split screen is used as a cinematic effect. Like, the way yeah. the split screen is constantly changing and diverging, it adds to the gameplay a lot. But there's okay. also, like, where they where the clearly the developer and the the lead guy who also plays like one of the main characters has a love for cinema and his actually his history is from movie making which i didn't know uh there's weird like disconnects in the game that just like well that doesn't make sense like one in early in the game one of your characters is getting into a fight and you're and i don't know one of our characters are arguing in prison and like my character pushes ryan's character towards the bleachers and then it hard cuts to me actually just pushing him up against the fence that wasn't there anymore Mm -hmm. uh and then there's other little things uh like that all all throughout the game where there's the cuts don't make sense another one we were chasing the guy remember the top down angle we were chasing the guy the the door and we reach him and then it hard cuts to the guy was actually beating up ryan against the door and i like saved him like no that's we cornered him together, but that isn't like little tiny bizarre edits that kind of I don't want to say take away because they don't, but make it a little bit funnier than I think they intended it to be. Yeah. Uh, and then the slips of the accent throughout the entire yeah. game um, of the the guys just their Swedish accent coming through. That's the thing. Like I I felt bad when I realized that it was like one of the developer's brothers that voiced the main character. And, like, the big joke for the whole game was just that his voice gets bad from time to time. (laughs) And I was like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, I was like, he's American. Like, you, I don't want to – I'm not trying to force you into it, but you could have hired, like, an American voice actor, and then it wouldn't have been a problem. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very very, uh, (laughs) David Cage-esque with, like, Nam and Jaden, the most French New York man in Mm -hmm. existence. (laughs) I'm trying to think of, like, the closest analog. I guess it would be Army of Two, right? But more, more particularly, anything that's tried to take advantage of a split-screen perspective right? like that. It seems very unique. I can't really think of many games that have done that sort of approach. Yeah, like, that's the coolest thing about it, for sure. Yeah. like, it, And, of course, funnily enough, one of the only comparisons I can really think of is Brothers of Tale of Two Sons. Yeah. Which isn't, isn't even really, like, the same thing, but it's just sort of, like, a unique gimmick that alters the gameplay significantly that has to do with controlling two people so i guess he's just got a pattern with that but yeah if they keep making good games that way then i guess that's fine right and and definitely don't go into the game either thinking well all right well it'll be you know a story-based game but maybe there'll be puzzles the puzzles are just kind of like <laughs> wander around the room look for yeah. the e hotkey and then just yeah. e and then they move the story pushes on go go mm-hmm. here and press e and it will either solve the problem or you have to he'll be in. like, yeah, he'll be like, this is what I need to solve the problem. So you like go to a wall and it'll be like, I can't get up here with just one person. And you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. You need two <laughs> people here. It's like, or, you know, like I need a bar to get through this door. And then you're like, okay. Like, <laughs> just go bar, look for a bar. I'll go grab that. That's I do fine. wish they'd given you a little bit more freedom to be like more of an asshole. Cause like mm. I straight up in the, when you were breaking into a house, I straight up would just murder the couple just for fun. Well, you know what it reminds me of is it's like a it's like a Universal Studios ride, in that you're kind of just like it. It's the gameplay is very, I don't want to say minor, but it's not like the main draw. You're kind of just like in this on rails environment with a friend of yours, and then when it's done, it's done. You don't have too much influence. Like the track's got to go where it's got to go. Yeah. I also like I don't know I I think I think it's good and it's fun, mm-hmm. but I think. 
where I fall relative to a lot of the criticism is I don't think the story is like that affecting or that touching. I think it was like really fun to riff on. Yes, I it's and not I quite see, heavy rain levels of like jankiness. But. No, 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 no. It's uh, I agree. I, I saw a lot of people through as we were playing through it, being like, "Will they ever take it seriously?" No, we won't, because the game is really hard <laughs> to take serious. Um, and maybe it's just the mindset we were in. But at every every good ten or fifteen minutes, something would just like a seam would show, or something would pop up and be just be like, "No, man, like that's just too funny not to riff on." Yeah, and. It, there's such a weird sexual tension between the characters. Like they just love each other a lot throughout the whole time. And even at the one point we were like, uh, at the end where you're doing like a bike ride throughout like a, like a escape kind of cutscene. You're like, Oh man, too bad. You don't get to like one person goes in the yeah. back and hugs each other. <laughs> Not two minutes later, one of them gets on the other bike and like has to hug them close. And right. And I'm like, man, these guys love one another. Just, just start dating. Go broke back sure. mountain. Maybe style. it's like an American thing though, that we're reading into it like that. Maybe, like, outside of the country, it's not a big deal. But it, what's funny about it is that it takes place in America. So you're, like, these right. hardened, like, yeah. ex-cons that are, like, on this adventure together. <laughs> and, like, at one point, one of them is carrying the other one. And he's yeah. carrying him, like, like with the other dude's legs around his back. Yes, that's right. Like I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, got, he's like, front-facing legs wrapped around him. Yeah. And it's like, that's all right, now, right? Really sexual. Well, and it happens in a moment of duress. Let's put it that way. But okay. it is that's kind of where I found like the the riffability is that because people are going like, well, that's an American attitude. Yeah, but the game takes place in the United States, so there's kind of like disparity between what the developers think it's like and yeah. what it actually is like. There's like a space for humor to exist there in some yeah. in some capacity. You can dunk on my son as well, which is really fun. You get to play basketball against a kid. Yeah. That's and you just like you can wreck him if you really yeah. want. Well, you need to. You need to put him, <laughs> in, put him in his place. place. Right, right. I think Two it's neat that like cons dunking on a little. <laughs> bit. And I think the the release model is actually really cool. Like the fact that one person buys it for two people to play makes it not because like five hours of decent gameplay for that's polished and cinematic and you know acted reasonably well enough and has a decent mm -hmm. amount of variety. Like, it's not bad for 40 bucks, but the fact that you and a friend could essentially split it, 20 bucks each, you're, you're probably never going to play through it again. But it, it makes it easier to recommend, I think. Yeah. I, li I like that a lot, too, that, that that model of only one person needs to buy it. Hayden and I were talking, oh like, uh, there's, there's chapter select, so you can replay specific sections if you want to. But, like, it's like, what if you just host a lobby and you put it on, like, new game? And then you chapter select to like the ending cutscene and, and just <laughs> launch it for whoever joins your game oh. over and over. <laughs> just, tr just troll the hell out of them. That's terrible. Oh, and then the last the last little funny bit that I just remember is like the cop chases, like in the beginning when you break out of prison, they give up so fast. Yeah. Like yeah. you get away from the cops by jumping into a rowboat and then rowing slowly away from them. And the cops are just like, yeah. well, ah, we'll get yeah, you. Yeah, like, all right, well, we have guns and they don't, but let's let them go. <laughs> it's cool. That. Like, the thing is, I think it's reasonably easy to recommend. I think there's a chance that it could be, like, in my top 15 or 20 games of the year. Because okay. I, I like playing through stuff like this. It's a unique experience. Um, mm -hmm. But I really, I'd like to see more games in this vein. It's way, yeah, I like, I'd rather play, like, this at a 7 out of 10 than just, like, ah, it's, like, a kind of, like, a co-op shooter that's okay. So the I fact that they tried one. to do something a little new, it, it, that carries it, I think, for the most part. If they were, like, you know, next summer, A Way Out 2, I would be, like, well, we're going to play it because, like, it's yeah. business. But I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be as excited, I think. Well, it's obviously <laughs> less mechanically lazy than that all of the interaction in the game is duck behind a knee-high wall and shoot, right? Like, right, everybody's exactly. yeah, more yeah. to that. So it's nice that we're at least taking a new angle on it, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And, and yeah, they, they do weird stuff. Like, they put you, like, in a rowboat, and you're like, this makes no sense, but hey, I'm in a rowboat now. That's cool. Like, at least I'm not just, you know, tapping space to jump over a, another obstacle or, you know. Cetera, I, I do appreciate that they, they pepper the game with a lot of quiet moments that yeah. you guys can just, you know, the two players can just do stuff that doesn't affect the game at all, but it's a way for you to, like, be closer with the person you're playing essentially do you know a game that needed a lot more quiet moments far cry uh, yeah. 5 oh. <laughs> hey oh <laughs> far that's cry that's another game 5. we want to talk about on the show fancy that 
How strange. Nick, what do you think about Far Cry 5? Uh, I thought it had a really nice presentation. It's a very pretty game. It's it, Hold that thought, pin it, because it's yeah. way better looking than I thought it would be. I was yeah. not ready for this. It's like it's good looking game. Yeah, it's very, yeah. Good very sharp. Everything is very sharp and well. So much detail good. and like the way that things respond to what you do to them. You can punch dents in the vans and they show up exactly where your fist lands, that kind of shit, you yeah. know, or like shooting on a TV and it explodes where you shot it. Just I love that they've paid attention to stuff like that. And the, the story presentation at the very beginning, I have to say, was very compelling as well. Uh, the very first scene and a couple of the uh, the sort of segue moments that happened between missions, uh, I really liked them. They were really well done, well shot, exciting, uh, interesting, kind of curious, mysterious. Uh, but then the letdown is all the stuff in between it is just so rote. And that's what got to me. It's just there's... My main complaint is there's too many goddamn bad guys, just generic mm -hmm. bad oh, guys it's... everywhere. So, like, I don't think we're going to be, like, well, I won't speak for us. I don't think I'm going to be that negative on Far Cry 5, but that, I think you're 100% right. Like, you hit my feeling on the nose, which is, like, if they don't give you a beat to rest, the cool stuff is, like, not as cool because yeah. it never ends. And I know that sounds counterintuitive to some people. It's a resaturation. You like, you, you, like, jump out of a helicopter and parachute down and shoot like 20 dudes in the head with an AK-47 and they're like outpost liberated and then you walk over to your car and like as you walk over to your car a van pulls up and eight dudes get out and they're all they're shooting you with bliss bullets and you're like okay okay uh, dude take your fire flaming crossbow and attack that guy and it's just like it never ends it doesn't ever stop ever and you're like sometimes yeah. you, I just want to drive a I mean, hundred feet down the road. <laughs> you've seen the quest, right? Where you go from point A to point B, and in just going maybe a mile, you'll see six or seven instances of yeah. the same man with yeah, the hands yeah. behind the head, somebody about to shoot him. Like, that's too much. you got to stop. There needs to be moments where you just enjoy the environment and not need to always stop what you're doing, get out and shoot someone. Yeah, and that I think is all you do is shoot people in the game. I mean, really, that's it. It reminds me of, like, and to frame it positively, it reminds me of, like, Spider-Man 2, uh, on like the PlayStation 2. Exactly. Where like you're going around the city and you're like balloon quest, shoplifter, blah, 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 blah. There's like nine different missions you could find, but it was fun to be in the environment and do them. Yeah. I think if you sort of, if you like that vibe, you'll be cool with Far Cry 5 because everything you're doing is on a base level fun. Like the gunplay mechanics, I think, are good. And the pseudo strategic planning of like, Hey, this is how I'm going to tackle the outposts. Like I'm going to ping everybody with the binoculars. So I know where they are. And then I'm going to sneak up behind these guys and blah, blah, blah. That stuff is like cool and fun. The fact that the, it just never ends to the point, like crazy. The, 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 the few moments where I was like, okay, this is maybe a little too much is uh, there's a couple things that have happened. Like I'm talking to some guy in an outpost that I've already liberated. And in the middle of the conversation, we're getting, we get ambushed. Like these guys just pull up on the road, fucking fight us, causing me to start the entire conversation I was having with him over again. And then, or like a wild animal or a skunk will be like, meh, 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 and like attacking me while I'm trying to talk to the guy. I have to now start it all over again. Um, I've even had moments where I look up in the sky and I can see the helicopter phase into existence as it's like <laughs> spawning on top the of AI me. Directors decided you're bored. Here yeah, you go. like I was standing still for too <laughs> long, like three That's seconds. That's a real thing, I think, in this game, honestly. It's no, so yeah, it does. There's a timer that goes off where you need to be entertained, or the game feels like it needs to throw something your way. At, or, yeah, or, and it's ADD it. about it too. Yeah. It's just, it, well, it goes too much. I don't know if you guys have had this situation, but we have only played like three hours and something along these same lines has happened to me at least four or five times. I like, there's a dude with his hands up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to liberate that guy. So I, you know, shoot the other dudes in the head. And then I try to talk to him and he's like, it says like in combat. In combat, yeah, or in combat. Or in combat, that's right, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean in combat? And then like a cougar just jumps yes! out and <laughs> mauls the survivor to death and then runs away. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's like I could picture if I was like 15 writing like a really long Reddit post like you won't believe what just happened. Yeah. Old County feels so alive. But what it means like the third time you see it happen, you're like, this is just annoying at this point. Yeah. Like I just want to I, I did the task. You now give me the reward. And like, oh, it's a cougar. Like it's not 
I've seen like a hundred animals. It's not that crazy anymore. Been, like, just give I've me a second. Similar things, but it's usually like I'll just be wandering around out in the wilderness, and two miles away from me, I'll hear somebody screaming, "Oh God, help me!" Yeah, yeah. or you hear gunshots. I get there, there's nothing I can. Do. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't want to. <laughs> Sorry, that's what I'm like when I play the game now. (laughs) You know, I see like somebody tied up at the side of the road, and I'm like, I could. Yeah, Yeah, I've had don't need it. (laughs) I've had moments too where you're like, you get the guy on the side of the road, and as you're going to liberate him, a like one of the trucks with the explosion thing drives by. So you're like, okay, I'll do that. And then as you're like working on the truck, like the three car. Um, like parade fucking comes down with the dudes and the Gatling convoy. guns. It com- that's what I'm like. Convoys come down the road and you have to take care of them. And as you're fighting them, it's the truck with the prisoner in the back also now coming down the road. And by the time you yeah. finally get them all done, you're like, there's just a pile of cars just exploding. Everyone's everywhere. dead. Cars everywhere. Yeah. No one knows what's happening. Even the person you s- saved is dead due to the explosions from the other missions. <laughs> yeah. No, due to a turkey that showed up halfway. Turkeys are no oh, joke, yeah. dude. Turkeys wreck your shit in this game. All of this being said, I think that it is fun. Yeah. I think if you know what you're getting into in this and you don't expect it to be like, uh, you know, it's not making as bold of a statement as it appears to be making. Oh, yeah, not at all. Right off the bat. Well, but, like, almost yeah. no statement to don't be yes. pay attention to it. It's, mo- people are like, blowing it out of proportion. Exactly. They're like, these crazy people are bad have you it's like have you like okay have you played a far cry game that's like yeah what they all i think honestly this is one of the least interesting villains out of all of them so far i don't disagree yeah well they've had really good villains though is the thing they've had a really yeah he's just got he's a list of things you're supposed to be afraid of in cults but he has like no actual personality he's sexy yeah i guess Mm mm-hmm i I don't know sort of a josh like way yeah (laughs) (laughs) well it's like I, I want to I want to do like the reverse sandwich method where I have two criticisms and then like oh, yeah. a compliment in the middle to yeah, make it right. sound like I'm not as bad. But like that really, that's the worst that's, way. To do it's it, the though. opposite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's to make the 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 criticism stand out. But like the the compliment is like on a mechanics level, the game is fun. And there's if you re, if you're the kind of person who plays like GTA Five and you're like there's tennis, there's ping pong, there's golf, you yeah. can watch TV. Like there's so much stuff that you can do in this game it's a it's rich in the sense that you can literally just be occupied the whole time that you play it and the mechanics are good like the shooting is fun you can approach things 50 percent stealth you can approach things 100 percent stealth more or less you can throw your shovel which is a great time i don't know if you guys impaled anybody with a shovel (laughs) that was very fun i I had a good time with that there is a bear named yes Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. There is a bear named Cheeseburger. Like, I was going to save that for the end, but it is a 10 out of 10 based on that alone. I don't know if you guys realize that. <laughs> That's all it needs. But you can't give him actual cheeseburgers. He has diabetes. He's got the diabetes. You got to be careful about it. There, actually, I'm going to, it's like a double decker sandwich, okay? Because, like, the one thing that Mathos is talking about, this is super quality of life. So it's not even that big of a deal. But I hate when you've just met a dude and he's a quest giver and he's like, well, here's my life story. Yeah. And then you're going around like picking up weapons and then trying to aim down the sights to like see what they look like and how they feel. And then when you look down the sights, the guy goes, don't you point that at me. And you're like, really? That's the end. I got to go click on you again. And then he goes, yeah. they do the clever. As I was saying, and then really, they really up. long paragraph started again from the beginning. And I'm like, I get you, but still and then the last thing is i actually disagree with uh with you nick on the story i think the story like the opening cutscene, i think it could be cool but i just hate like when a game opens like that or i tend to hate it i guess i guess i'm still lulled into the like call of duty modern warfare this is supposed to be exciting so it feels exciting because the thing is like i'm (laughs) i do I want to care about the narrative, but when the game opens with like you on a helicopter and people like talk to you and give you backstory for like 10 minutes. Every Far Cry game opens the exact same way. Yes. By the way. You're, you're on some <laughs> method of transportation and then meet charismatic uh, bad guys, something goes wrong and it's just you now. And then a helicopter blows up. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Like, it's, like you've written a hundred games. Like this is all fine. Like you, you know what you're doing in Far Cry 4 is being, or Far Cry 5 is being received well, but when the game opens with like 10 minutes of some dude that I know is going to get capped talking to me, 
He's a, if there's a dude over 50 and he's like, I've been in, I've been yeah. in yeah. a whole, oh, whole county my whole exactly life. I hope you're ready. Like, Rookie. When I started the game on stream. I was like, oh, this dude's dead. He's in <laughs> yeah. no chance. Yeah. Checklist. Yeah. Each check is dead. <laughs> and it's 10 minutes and I'm like hidden escape. Like, yeah. I just want to yeah. let me get to the point where I can do something. Like, they could have yeah. cut. Honestly, they could have cut out. They could have started you on a helicopter and had someone just like shoot a rocket at you. And then you crash, cut out the whole, the cut out the whole middle part where you're like, you know, arresting the guy and walking him through the camp. And then just mm. opened and then like black screen opened up with you hanging upside down and the main villains looking at you like right in front of your face. Yeah. Change, a, change a couple lines of dialogue and you're right into it and you have the same kind of context as to what's going on. Go Doom you, style with it. Yeah, you don't need that 15 minutes. Oh, I'm going to walk this guy through the camp. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. definitely arresting him. You know, we're outnumbered like 70 to 1 and that's fine. Like... That's another thing, too. The government sends, like, five people into this gigantic cult of that hundreds like, that are all armed. State. Yeah. That yeah. are all armed. And and even if they are the, the people uh, who are just like, well, we didn't know they were armed, fly over them. Be like, you know, they all have they, guns. They just got guns. Like, let's yeah, come back when we have, let's, like, let's radio in. We need more people. It's crazy. I mean, they do have a conversation in the helicopter, admittedly, that's like, we really shouldn't be doing this. This is a bad idea. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm, I'm the deputy. I'm going to yeah. go take care of it. I'm the big tough guy. My my memory of that opening conversation is gone. I don't, it was As so... It I don't remember any. I just remember the cool. stupid parts of being like, when is this going to turn into a game? The basis of why I think I'm frustrated by the story beyond that cutscene being presentationally kind of nice, like it's smooth looking. Yeah. Uh, it... They don't ever establish what the cult is. It's just bad, <laughs> right? Like they just are murderous, and we don't really know what their goals are, how it started, or why it started. Cold At least a week, I guess, is yeah. sort of their creed. But yeah, that's a. Little I feel like you need that motivation pretty early on, and in the first seven hours I played, I never found any of it. It's just people are shooting at you all the time. <laughs> and they have white shirts on, and that's how you can identify that they need to be killed. No, they got white shirts and long, scruffy hair and beard. They, they, they all kind of look like they're from a folk band. Yeah. Oh, dude, my guy is just straight up mullet in an American t-shirt with bandages on his hands, and he carries an aluminum bat. So I'm just like, you know what? This is I am definitely in the army. You need to get him a Duber shirt. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you guys get to the cutscene where uh, this is where they kind of pulled me back narratively? Um, if you go to like the southwestern island, I think you tr start to trigger this quest line where they're like, we've captured these people and they're all you have to do is say yes. And they had like a banner behind them. It was filmed like a oh, cheesy yeah, info. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Yeah. I was like, that's good. I, that was, I was good. starting to get pulled in. Because I like Far Cry, the thing is, it's self-aware. Yeah. Like as long as I've been playing it, it's a game that's self-aware, which is why they do that, you know, 200 IQ, you know, you you can get an ending within the first 15 minutes of playing the game if you just exercise your right to choose, you know. Yeah. It like, likes to have fun. Exactly. So I hate being the curmudgeon that's like you didn't earn the opening cutscene. Like I didn't <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a 5-year-old that's like just let me shoot a guy and then give me the cutscene and I'll feel sated for 10 minutes. But mm. Like, I don't know. I just kind of feel like it's a fun story, but it is, like, a little toothless, and I don't know. It's just, when you when you do, when you're always shooting, it's like I don't appreciate the shooting that much. When, like, driving from one mission to obje objective to another, there's, like, a hundred things that you encounter. It just doesn't feel right. Like, it, 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 it's almost too much fun, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, well, okay, it's like eating me, too many candy bars. Distractions. Yeah, yeah me, like, like a, a, a defense a bit, because I feel like yeah. we're being a little too hard on it. Because I, I'm having just a hell of a time with it. it it's easily mm -hmm. my game of the year so far t for 2018. I can say that with confidence. But it's, like, I, I recognize these issues, and I see that a lot of people are saying that it's just, it's stuffed full of just filler that you don't necessarily have fun with after a certain point. But the way I play it usually is like, I'll just, I kind of just let myself wander around, you know, like I've got an objective yeah. waypoint, but I just kind of let the game hold my hand and take me on a ride. And yeah. I usually try to end up off road as well, which helps a lot. I've found like, if you're not on the main road, it doesn't hurl a bunch of shit at you all the time. In fact, I usually find I'm feeling pretty peaceful, you know, like until I find an outpost or something to do, which is usually the, the point of wandering around like that. That's like my ideal way to play Far Cry, and I feel like they've done a fairly good job of facilitating that experience. I, I think that it's it's the the loop there is very satisfying still. 
I, uh, I, I'll, I'll swap over to being positive as well, because I, I am with you. I don't want to say it's maybe my favorite game so far of the year, but I am having a really good time with it as well. Mm-hmm. And um, it does seem like Ubisoft is listening, at least to an extent, about the shit that we didn't like about the original Far Cries. There's uh, a lot or, of quality of life improvements. Well, there are. There's a there's awesome. a good moment in at the end of the tutorial. Yes. When you yeah. you climb a radio tower and the guy goes like, yeah. I bet you're thinking I'm gonna have you climbing these all over town. Nope, just this one. And yep, I was that's like, it. All right. There are other ones though. I be believe fair. it. But I, was, I was like, you know what? But yeah. You got it. I, I'll give you that one. You, yeah. You've you've taken my cynicism and kind of like reflected. So that's cool. Uh, the mm-hmm. other. Uh, thing that i really like as well is um it's a small thing but it's something that i i really praise zelda for as well there's no more minimap the minimap is gone and i really appreciate that because it gives you more of a sense of an exploration when you're wandering around so when i come across like those little huts who might have like a an emergency basement that you can go down to and explore and stuff it feels like a discovery it feels like a little story just being presented visually to you and i some it's what it's, those are my like some of my favorite parts of Fallout and The Witcher are just stumbling across things that mm-hmm. are just kind of placed into the world and there's no marker that you you have to go to yeah. to find it you just find no, beep, it beep 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 yeah and I appreciate that a lot they the, they've really kind of pulled back a bit on the idea of everything's marked have fun just going to each marker in the world and find in like looking what we've put out there for you those caches are i think the top of the entertainment level for me actually they're self uh, presented little shrines like in zelda where there's actually some level design like Mm -hmm. specific level design not just terrain yeah there's a goal and your goal is usually finish this little tiny little area and then you get a bunch of skill points which is like the most important currency in the game Mm -hmm. obviously um there was one where you had to go into a grain silo and there's like bees everywhere I didn't know where that was going to go, and I had to, like, sneak around them, and then I had to, like, flamethrower one of them or Molotov one of them. It's a little safe in the corner, and then you find your way up to the sides, some jumping and hopping, and, Mm -hmm. you know, I just like that. It wasn't constant shooting. It was something to think about. It was something a little different. Give me more of that. They... The other thing they've improved that I really like is no more animations on skinning every oh, yeah. animal in the yeah. world. So they've really upped the quality of life for hunting in particular, just across the board. It's just so much more logical and it's so much more satisfying now because it's just straight up selling skins for money. And that's yep. enough of a reason to hunt. You don't I'm... have to connect it to all this crafting bullshit. Just let us get money. Crafting is so minimal now, which I love yeah, so yeah. much. And all the upgrades are just connected to perks. And what I love about the perks and the perk point system uh, is that the perks are kind of, they come at me naturally. I don't really look, I don't ever look at the challenge list of all the things I have to do to get perk points. I'm just playing the game and I'm accomplishing them and I'm getting perks naturally as I play through the game. And I appreciate that as well. I don't, I like, I don't have to be like, all right, I need to what? Headshot 350 guys with this pistol in order to get my next perk point. It's just, it happens. And you use those perks to unlock the wingsuit and more holsters and all kinds of nice things that, Overall, in the older ones, you'd have to craft and hunt and grind for, and now just kind of, eh, you get perks and you unlock them as you need them. Yeah, it's a lot more freeform. The same amount of toys too. I mean, like it, it's it's got a certain like just cause level of free fun that you can experience with this game, and with the wingsuit now too, along with like the grapple and things like that, it almost has a Breath of the Wild level of freedom of movement which is very satisfying. Because... Can you only use the grapple in, like, a couple places? Oh, yeah, sure. But I'm talking about, like, just being able to fly around everywhere yeah. with a wingsuit and being able to climb up a hell of a lot of cliff structures, too. Like, they, they generally give you an, an option to ascend. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's typically designed to allow you to move around freely regardless of where you are, which is impressive. But, yeah, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to try to suggest that the grapple is that life-changing either because you're right there's only like a few places you can use it but still i just i appreciate that there's still that variety of movement options available and the it's just fun to play that's yes at the end of the yes, day that's it's really just that's where i said as well play, man. i agree like i mean i didn't think far cry 4 was that good but mm-hmm. i i was entertained and i beat yeah. far cry 4 and mm-hmm. i think you know if i find myself with the time i might do the same thing with far cry 5 if anything it's more like i'm only putting out a caution for people who are like me that are like I don't want this game to be 60 hours long. I want to see what they're doing in the main story, play all like the set pieces and do like my mileage may vary with whatever emergent stuff I come across. If you're like that, you might find it a little tedious to be stopped at all times, you know, that by, or to the other thing is, and I don't know, maybe I'm just like a bitch, but I feel weird 
just driving past kidnapping victims, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like in the story as the savior. And I'm like, sorry, got a main quest to do. Got to talk to the pastor. Oh, <laughs> if you're still here in like a couple hours, maybe I'll come back. But yeah, you're not a priority at the moment. Don. Yeah, like it's more like uh, people I am getting and I, I open myself up to this. I should just stop saying things like it's too much fun. But, you know, if it's the, the thing is like a, a piece of music is like the notes and the silence and yeah. Far Cry 5 is like an air horn. <laughs> it's just like one constant, like pleasant tone, but there's no like, I'm not going to say there's no complexity, but it's kind of just like a flat line, like this is the game. It doesn't have like moments like, when even watching Nick play Call of Duty uh, World War II, which is probably worse, at least from the time that I played it. I enjoyed it less than my time with Far Cry 5. There were moments in that game where you're shooting... Nazis in the face just like over and over and over and then there were moments that are like hey here's like a quiet mission where you're kind of like doing some stealthy-ish stuff inside and it's even if that stuff's uneven it's variety that makes the experience richer in my opinion the you can choose to go into a building as a stealth type person but when you're driving around the landscape there's no stealth to be had the trucks are going to have people get out no matter how you want to play the game mm -hmm. right so that's you you lose that autonomy the stealth option when you're in the game world in general yeah I mean, in the end, it's not like Splinter Cell, but that is when I'm having my most fun in Far Cry. Like when they're like, get on the artillery and shoot down that Boeing 747. I'm like, okay, that's fun. But when they're like, hey, there's like eight dudes here and you got a rake, like just go kill them. And you yeah. just run up to them and like stab them through the back of the neck over and over. I'm like, that's perfect. That's, that's my Far Cry experience. And then when things go wrong, you just shoot four dudes in the face. Well, yeah. That's not always the plan. That's my ideal Far Cry, at least. <laughs> <laughs> that and never being drugged against my will in the story in every single game, but... But, you know, it's gotta It happen. wouldn't be a Far Cry <laughs> game without a weird <laughs> drug scene. That every Far great. Cry since 3, right? Yeah, I think so. I Definitely mean, in 4, a there's... common theme. There's oh. like a, you know, drop LSD moment in 4. Is there one I mean, in like, Primal? Oh yeah, Who there knows? definitely isn't one primal. <laughs> yep, you take like these old plants like and smoke it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I and mean, every Far Cry, you have a weird drug scene that you have. They to made have. an entire Far Cry game around being on acid, for God's sake, and Blood Dragon. So that's yeah. <laughs> much grandma at this point. I mean, that's like the story so far of Five is like all the bad guys are on a weird drug. Yeah, whatever that green barrel is. Have, have you guys tried the co-op at all? I've heard it's very no. seamless, drop in, drop out. So I'm encouraged by that as well. But. Nice. No, my experience with the AI made me uh, want to try that because the AI is pretty worthless when it comes to that kind of thing. It's um, goofy, man. <laughs> I, well, my mains, the one complaint that I had that was at forefront of my memory was when I was trying to deal with that convoy. And I guess I had some other liberated people following me behind like in another ATV. And then I liberated a third one. So we had two randoms and then another friendly. And I just wanted one of them to come with me. But there were three ATVs and three different people all getting on different seats and different ATVs. And I couldn't get any of them to go where I wanted. They mm. all wanted to drive to other places and switch seats over and over. <laughs> so I finally got in the driver's seat of one of them. The guy was just kneeled next to my ATV. He wouldn't get in. I was beating <laughs> my horn at him. I was like, let's go. <laughs> wouldn't get in. And then he randomly decides to get in. And then we go. And then, of course, I have to immediately stop because then there's something else that demands my attention. He gets off, can't get back on. It's real frustrating. It was ATV <laughs> musical chairs. I wish you could just get on the damn chair and go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got its share of, you know, trademark first week Ubisoft glitches, too. It's not yeah. have some of those. But that's, I mean, I assume at this point that those are just a patch away from being fixed. Uh, another thing I want to give him the benefit of the, of the doubt, too, is I I feel like the Far Cry games do tend to open up a little bit more as far as mission variety later on in the story. So it's possible, I'd, I'd assume, that there's a little bit more variety later on that we just haven't gotten to yet. I want to, you know... There's the Testicle there. Festival. That was right sure. at the beginning. Yeah, oh, Testicle okay, Festival. And Never cut the nuts off a bull in mid-coitus before. That's a first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Aliens... The, the, sentence. the Aliens yeah. quest was really fun, too, which is really early in the game. I had fun mm. with that. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm, right, I'm just... I'm really having a good time with it. Uh, you can pet the dog, and there are three different petting animations, which is A-OK -okay in my book. Uh, <laughs> more would be good, but I guess three is a satisfying start. 
Uh, plus, most of the NPCs have unique lines of dialogue to praise the dog as well. So they're really got their priorities in order over there at Ubisoft. I appreciate it. Yeah. You can, yeah. And when he gets hurt, you pat his him on the belly and he gets up. Dude, I, I accidentally hit him with the ATV. And then <laughs> <laughs> the sound he made will, will like, forever yeah. haunt my nightmares. I just... I, I, felt like such a horrible person you say you feel bad leaving the fucking kidnapping victims behind on the side of the road. <laughs> I the dog man <laughs> rip oh. doggo rip doggo mm -hmm. i revived him though he's okay yeah of course he's a good boy i think oh. it's pretty good i do too man like i said it's a game of the year contender for me for sure early on here and i uh i look forward to playing some more far cry think, five like for some people is like your ideal experience yeah. yeah. For I me, mean, I'm like, it's it's so big. It's one of those it's <laughs> it's one of those other things where we've talked about in the past, but like we look at it from a different perspective than most people are looking at this game for, you know? If somebody only can buy yeah. a game a month or a game every two months, this Cry great. Five's got a goddamn incredible amount of content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's just a ton of stuff to do. Just as long as you understand that the the core crux of the gameplay is shooting bad guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm like, my my game of the year so far is like an 8x8 eight eight strategy game that could have come out on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's, it's really genius. No, oh, it is. It's very, very impressive. <laughs> I'm holding off, man. I'm hoping my game of the year that I'm going to have access to next week. I mm. want Battletech so bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> uh, well, there we go. Far Cry 5 is 60 bucks available now. It's on Uplay. Oh, boy. Uplay's just, it's okay. It, it that, does. Is, that is the Microsoft Store. Yeah. You play, it, it rose one rank after seeing this <laughs> game. <true>. <laughs> <laughs> it's only bottom five now or something. Oh, man. Why did I even open you play? It's just to give myself the visual aid. All right. <laughs> You're yeah. like, you play. That's a, that's that's the one. Uh, there's three editions as well, if you were curious. The gold edition. Of course. 90 bucks. You got to get it. It's got a gold boomer, I, I think. I don't want to lie to you. I don't know what it has, but there you go. Far Cry 5. Hooray. Uh... You know, No Man's Sky is coming to Xbox One. I, no, you know, we don't uh, have even <laughs> be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, I mean, if you... Uh, yeah. No, I'm not. I mean, Never I, mind. I'm, I'm biting my tongue. No, because no. the thing is, <laughs> the only reason we're talking about No Man's Sky is because we've talked about No Man's Sky so much, but the only reason we ever talked about it was because it was being talked about. It was in the zeitgeist. Exa forever. Yeah. And that's like, we don't need to... We don't need to. It's okay. No, yeah, no, it's fine. I'm just all right. It's fine. Open really. Okay. <laughs> I'm still like a little mad. I will always. If you, if you, it's. I, I'm still man. You bait me, and I'll chomp on that so fast with No Man's Sky. Uh, well, I can I can talk for a few minutes about uh, Nino Kuni too. Oh June, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, I, no. I picked up on the PS4 Pro this past week. I've been hearing very, very good things about it. I played uh, not a ton of the first Nino Kuni game. It was. It was adorable. I think that's like the most obvious and best point of praise you can give to the first Nino Kuni game. It was adorable. It had a lot of heart and charm, and uh, the story was really sweet, but sad as well. And uh, it kind of just got boring, though. Like the the combat in particular in the first game it had this sort of Pokemon style to it that really wasn't all that captivating uh, to me, at least. And I, I hear it's a common gripe with it as well. They've done away with that completely in the second game. The combat is entirely different. It's uh, just like straight up a hack and slash almost. So you've got uh, your main boy, Roland, that you drop in with at the start, uh, who is the president of some country that just exploded and then he was teleported <laughs> by a fairy to another <laughs> world. Yeah. So JRPG, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, so Roland's here uh, with your boy uh, Evan, I want to say. Evan is the king of Ding Dong Dell, and I think he's 10 years old or something like that. Hell yeah. So this is all going That's exactly Nino according Kuni. to plan so far, I'm sure, right. Uh, and uh, you, you drop in and you're sort of tutorialized with all the combat. You get introduced, you got your quick slash, you can dash roll. And what I actually like about it at the start, too, is it puts you in this situation very early on where you're supposed to sneak by these elite guards. And if you get caught by them, they'll kick your ass. But if you practice a little bit, you actually can beat them at the start. So it gives you that choice of, like, do you want to sneak mm. by or do you want to hack and slash it out? And it just has that freedom early on which is really like that i think sets the tone for oh it's gonna let me do things my own way uh, the demon souls intro yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's the most apt comparison for nino kuni 2 i think is demon souls that's definitely 
Well, they always throw uh, a hard boss at you at the beginning, and then you're meant to fail it, but you can win, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so I haven't gotten too far into it. I'd say, like, probably two or three hours, but I've really been impressed uh, by the combat because that, again, in particular, was something that sort of lost me with the first game, so that obviously has been completely overhauled. They, they took that to heart that people didn't really enjoy that element of it, so they've just done away with everything they had before, which is great to see. And uh, then it's beautiful, too. Like, yeah, and it looks gorgeous. Like, the style obviously doesn't really facilitate a lot of super impressive artwork, but what it is is gorgeous. It, it's really well Studio done. Studio Ghibli, There's, you know? Like, like, yeah, seriously. It is something to see, especially on the PS4 Pro. So I was, I was really impressed with that, too. But uh, I'm digging it. I'm definitely going to be playing more. I think it's a good couch game. I hear it is portal. exceptionally easy. Mm. I'm certainly not going to disagree with that, although I was met with that challenge, like I said early on with those elite guards, but that was sort of a particularly unique moment as well. I, I don't know if I can speak to it yet, the difficulty level, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll see how it goes moving forward. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if it was kind of a, walk, a cakewalk because like, the combat is fa fairly straightforward, too. It's like any, any hack and slash that you've played before, it, you'll be fairly familiar with how to use this. You, just get, you got your L1 dodge roll, Strong attack, short attack, and guard and shit like that, and it's all pretty basic. So, yeah, well, it's, it's. I just awesome. want to interject real quick. I watched Jim Sterling's review on it, and he brought up that eventually the combat turns into a bit of a different thing. It starts wow. to become a bit like Pikmin, uh, oh, because really? there's a large portion of the game is rebuilding the kingdom, and you get all these little minions that follow you around. Oh, and cool! You start yeah, commanding them to do stuff. So, you know, uh -huh. even if you're not super into the main combat, there's like an alternative that comes along later. Great. Okay, cool. That sounds awesome. And I know there's like, I, I don't even remember the name of the place, but there's some place that you unlock a little bit of the way through that ends up being like the core of the experience. People are right. like loving this area. So I haven't even gotten to that point yet either. There's a lot of stuff that I haven't even seen. So ways to go in Nino Kuni too, but I am excited for what I've got and uh, looking good. It's also $60 if you're interested. Oh, uh, yeah. I, that's that's pretty much been a slow week. Like, Dude, yeah. Nothing happened in the gaming industry this week. Nothing. Yeah. No, no game other than Far Cry Five. Like nothing mm. came out. <laughs> <laughs> I was what I always do when you guys are like, "There's no news." I'm like, "You're silly." You're, I did go to our games oh. and go like top this week, and then the top story was like, "Sea of Thieves is a disguised early access." And I'm like, "Yeah, no. we know, we did what's, it." <laughs> okay, what, what's news next? We talked about this morning on Skype. I just didn't know if we wanted mm. to bring it up. Uh, which one was, oh, the, oh, the Twitch thing? Yeah. Or, mm, uh, I don't know. Like, we don't even really have that much input there, right? Yeah, it's just, just sometimes there is news. Happens. It's just not news we need to comment yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that, that tends to be happening a lot more now, too. Uh, yeah, and, like, things like Microsoft to ban offensive language from Skype and Xbox. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds Good like luck. fun. Yeah, talk. apparently you can get like into trouble if you like do sexy talk on there now, which is not real cool. Well, I'm reporting all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're reporting people is the thing. It's like maybe it's a like a thing they're scanning for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, never say swear words anymore, kids. Except on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast. That's where you got your freedom still. Yep. That's I think right. gonna... freedom. Yeah. Is that a cat meow? Yeah. I was like, was that Tomo? Like a human doing a cat impression. That's why I figured it was it was, it was Tomo. <laughs> meow. Tomo's got a weird meow. Some I was like, that was a normal meow, and some days he's like, hey! <laughs> Tomo. Meow. <laughs> I'm Tomo. <laughs> All right. Well, cat yeah, table podcast. We're... Yeah, that's. I mean, when when the show becomes this, I think at this point we realize that's it. maybe time to wrap up a little early tonight. So, yeah. That'll do. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Sorry for the uh, shorter show today, but we certainly appreciate your time all the same. Hope you enjoyed what we were able to talk about, and hopefully there's a bit more next week. Of course, we will have the game of the month for March that we'll be talking about next week. I'll, uh, I won't. Like okay, that. PAX East is next week, so I won't be here. I, I admire your due diligence that a game could come out tomorrow that takes the game of the month title See, man, yeah. <laughs> that was, good. was that an illusion at the game <laughs> no it's just like today's the 30th and there's one more day in the month right. so it would be unethical to do game of the month today see you gotta be fair you gotta you don't know what's coming for the surprise hits <laughs> uh yeah so we'll be doing that next week hopefully a little bit more news we'll be playing something i'm sure we'll just figure out what that is and yeah keep going here on roundtable live thanks for watching everybody really appreciate you we are live 
uh, not Thursdays, Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific here on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast. You can follow us over at roundtable PC on Twitter. Uh, thank you very much to those of you over on patreon.com slash roundtable who have been supporting the show. Uh, I see, I knew you. No, 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 I got that. I, I said, oh, God damn it, because I kept Streamlabs in a tab that it wasn't open. So I went we over and I'm like, this conversation. damn it. Because I got, well, we were talking about stuff and I got distracted. And I was like, oh, I'm going to look something up. But no, I just did. Uh, Somebody's just... been taking a little too much of the doober, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, these are premium <laughs> teas, dude. Premium <laughs> teas. Um. But anyway, We're twenty dollars sponsored by them. By the way, no, yeah, oh yeah. God, no, God, no. But if they like to, you are... <laughs> <laughs> only if you live in a state they deliver their premium T-shirts in. Um. Anyway, yeah, twenty dollars. Uh, Patreon members and up, starting with uh, Julian Avelsgard, Scotty One Hundred Nine, Ricky Grist, Mediocrities, Justin, Love and Respect to You and Your Loved Ones, Chaos Theorist, uh, Jin, Your Weak Falco. <laughs> Your Jin, week, your week, your Jin, week, your week, Falco. Yeah, what I'm trying to is that like? Does that just say your week? Your week, your you week, week, but not not week like your weakling. Week is in your just like the week. This like is our week. Oh, okay. Uh, it hasn't it's been week. your day, your week, or month. Oh, is or that the? Year. Oh, oh, he's doing the thing. Oh, okay. Oh, I just didn't know where in the song we were with that line. Mm -hmm. I just all right. Anyway, uh, Simmerfet cow, uh, Simmerfet. Cowboy Chemist, Eric Schooley, Stephen Aoki, uh, James Peed, Peter Sunson, Ella Spice, John Kalchik, Otamaz Games VR, Jakar Sampson with the dance number, Call Nar, Sahoa, Talks to All, Kobe Klein, Green Light, and Oren Saltzman. And we got some Twitch subs as well, don't we? Or do we? I I've know. got a few. All right. I can read cool. off a few. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, starting with here. Uh, Protein Pancaka, TB the British, FD, BX Frodo, Hydra FX, Meta Knight, Queen of Sprinkles, Raw Egg, 114, Valhalska, Bodie Bear, Roster B, Dr. Tasselhoff, Fist of David, Sun Brosifs, Saucy 777, and I am the meme now. Dope. Get Thanks, it? Guys. You got a weed shirt on. Anyway, welcome. <laughs> or, I mean, thank you for watching the show. Everybody, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be uh, back next week. You just dab. Did you just dab? Hell yeah. Let's go. Who dab? Uh, Ryan dab? Let's go. <laughs> it's, uh... we, there's an that we're doing that at the end All of right. the show. Hey, Thanks for watching right. Roundtable <laughs> Podcast <laughs> Live. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Not dabbing. <laughs> it's your loss.